Giro d'Italia stage one was an 8.3 kilometer time trial around Torino. Very, very quick times, 55, 56 kilometers an hour. Unfortunately, we don't have Ganna's ride entirely, but we're gonna be able to calculate some good numbers. We're gonna go through some tech and it's gonna be an exciting video. So this is the segment here, which actually I ended up creating um, because no one else had. But anyway, it starts off in Palazzo Moderna, a bit technical here, pretty fast flowing part here. And then this is the real technical part, a couple U-turns. Ganna was absolutely flying around it. If you can watch it, definitely watch it. Ganna was unreal at cornering. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll, we're gonna go through. So we look at the times, Edward Affini, 8.36. So this segment's probably maybe, what, 20 seconds off uh, what it was. Um, Affini got binned by Ganna by 10 seconds. Foss also did well. But we're gonna look at Max Volscheid. Now, Max Volscheid is a big boy. Uh, I'm not gonna lie about it. Uh, we'll see what he puts his weight in. He doesn't put his weight in. But I've heard he's about 90 kilos. 89 kilos basically he's huge so his numbers are going to be a bit higher than Ganna's um but not too much higher than I think based on what the numbers I've seen Ganna do in training and based on what his threshold is uh which he also puts on Strava so out the blocks as I said before relatively technical so a big 1300 watts to get out of the blocks for Walshide um we, we'll go over to pro cycling stats in a minute and show you exactly where Walshide came but anyway he was Top 10, I believe, uh, we'll, we'll whack it down here. Uh, Max Walshide, yeah, eighth. So, you know, a fair way back, 20 seconds-ish back from Ghana. Um, so anyway, get back to the power analysis. Sorry, this video is a little bit choppy, but early on, just a lot of surging to get up to speed. Um, and then we've got this long straight part here where we'll really be on the gas more or less the whole time and sort of selling into 530 watts out the corners up to 900 watts, like probably in the saddle as well, which is absolutely crazy. So 540 watts down here, 57 kilometers an hour, that is just absolutely monstrous. Then again, this small te this technical part here, backs the power off, goes over the River Po, still 446 watts despite not pedaling here um, and some decent surges out the corner. And then this last drag was sort of um, I think a little bit uphill towards the finish, but this is where, really where they turned on the power. You know, 552 watts, um, absolutely huge numbers. I mean, like, if you if I did 500, well, okay, I'm tiny, but that doesn't really make sense. But, you know, if an average person did 550 watts for like two minutes, I mean, that's just obscene. But on a TT bike, at the end of the race, it's just absolutely crazy. Um, and the speed is going 55K an hour, absolutely rapid. So all up for Max Walshide. If we look at this, we've got normalized power of 540, an average of 537. Uh, sometimes when there's some pausing and stuff, the, the normalizer and the average can be a little bit dodge. Uh, but yeah, there we go. 540 watts for nine minutes, 40. Absolutely bonkers in the TT position. Now, we're going to try and do some Charlie Carbon Cycling dodgy little maths to figure out what Ganna would be doing. So if we look at someone, so Roger Kluger, 480 watts. Campanert's obviously a lot smaller. Um, in terms of just height, he's only about 1 minute 73. He is like 68, 70 kilos, but 430 watts for there, 450. So you can see like uh, 460 for Jorgensen, but error is pretty important. Big up Simon Carr, 440. Big, big performance from him. He did well. He did well. Um, friend of the channel. Uh, so this is Ganna. They say the last two kilometers, he did 590 watts at 61 kilometers an hour. Now that is huge. So if we extrapolate from this, so let's say they paced it meh, more or less the same then that means if he's doing 590 here, he's doing an average of 40 watts over. So on this part here, we could probably say he's doing maybe 30 watts more, so like 550. So all in all, I'd say Ganna's probably doing about 540 to 550 for nine minutes, which is just obscene, like actually ridiculous numbers. Um, I've calculated this, well, we'll go over to Ganna's right here. So Ganna uploaded um, this saying it's Jira stage one, but he didn't include the race file. You can see here it started at 12 o'clock. He raced a lot later. Um, his threshold's 450, which means he's doing 470 watts at 85 kilos. No, is that right? No, a little bit more. But anyway, his threshold's around six, uh, uh, 5.7 watts per kilo. So you can see he did a dummy run here, uh, I reckon just for the corner. He might have been motor pacing off the cars or something. But you can see he's doing like 470 watts um, and this part here. I'm assuming he's on full race equipment. He's going 56k an hour, 446 watts. So you think if he's gaining another three, four kilometers an hour at this sort of speed, that would be another 50, 60 watts. So maybe he was doing 500. So I would predict it probably isn't as high as Walshide because he is definitely more idle um, than Walshide. Uh, but I'd still say it's north of 500 watts for sure, uh, which is absolutely bonkers to win it. Um, and I think it also shows when we look at all the different numbers that actually raw power isn't the most important thing. Like Kluger and Campanerts, pretty much almost identical times, but one's doing 51 watts less just because they're so much more aero. Um, and it's the same here. Like 
you know, Jorgensen 464 watts, but he's not going to beat Campenhutz just because he's not as aero, and that is a key point of this race. Um, so anyway, we're now going to go over some equipment of Ganna. So he's on his Pinarello Belide TT bike. Um, he's got his custom Most extensions. I think they could be aero coach. There's rumors they are, rumors they're not. Helmet, I believe, is the Beluga unreleased to everyone else. He's got this dimpling skin suit underneath, which I, I um, saw a base layer, which makes access dimples on the skin suit, which is pretty clever stuff. Um, here's a classic EF. Um, I think this is Kaisido, isn't it? Um, just their new bike, got rim brakes, actually, so this must be the old one. Old pox style helmet, nothing too crazy about here. Vlasov got the, some custom extensions. I believe these are speed bar. Some say they're rebranded Visions, but I'm pretty sure Visions are slightly different. So speed bar, his position looked good. Lima helmet, um, oversized pulley wheel, I reckon as well. Uh, again, these are the data bars uh, for David Formolo. Not a great performance from here. And the Met Concordia, which is slightly wider. I think the Jumbo Visma guys are really interesting to look at. They've always had a change of bike sponsor going from Bianchi to Cervelo, and they've also changed wheels slightly as well because they're going disc. So last year they were all Shimano slash Pro set up, um, but now you can see they've got the big Titan 100mm front wheel, which is also what Ineos have. It's an aero coach one, and it's probably one of the deepest you can get in the market. And I think on a pan flat TT like this, it just makes sense to have a stupidly deep wheel, especially if you're a big boy like Ganna or Paul Martins here or Foss or Affini. They're all big, like they're not going to get blown around very much. Rear wheel, I believe, is a, is not a Shimano. I can't remember exactly what it is because it's not sure Shimano make a disc disc, if that makes sense. Uh, helmet is the laser. Um, all their setup has got uh, quite a nice mono uh, riser system here, which you can't really see in this picture, but hopefully we'll get some better pictures. Uh, here's more of Vlasov. There's more of Jani Moscon, who also had a good ride. Um, you can see here, some of them actually run the Carbon Prince Winton Works one. Ah, here we go, side on. You can see this mono riser here. I really, really rate it. Um, just in so much clean, having two spaces. Uh, chain rings 58 here. I think some of them should have gone for a 60 single ring or 62. Or like if you can it, whack a 62 to single ring on it. No front derailleur, no chain rings. But I know obviously sponsors Shimano don't want that. But hopefully Shimano will realise that it's it doesn't really affect them that much. Um, here is Matteo Jorgensen. He doesn't have any custom bars. He's on the new Canyon Speedmax. Uh, it's got a slightly thicker fork because um, the UCI got rid of the three to one ratio. So a thicker fork than you'd normally find on an old school bike. And we sort of compare to um, here, you can see uh, on the P5, despite it being a new bike P5, it re only redesigned, I think two years ago. Um, the Canyon obviously have got a wider fork, which I guess they say increases airflow. Disc brakes, they say it's faster than the old one by a little bit, but I think that's like two watts faster, but you think they probably you know, done a lot more integration, a lot more interesting things up here and then with the forks and it still only just offsets the disc brakes. So I don't think the disc brakes are more aero. Uh, chain ring size, Shram have now realized that 56 or 58 is very important. So we've got some bigger chain rings. You can tell they're bigger because they're black. Um, it was saying Nibali was running 50, but I don't think he was. And then zip sub nine rear disc um, and I guess normal extensions, nothing crazy up here. And at Abus helmet, I'm not sure they're that quick. LA kit, always good. Um, this is so uh, Danny Martinez, he has a really aggressive position. It's a shame we don't get to see it. Really rate that position. Again, I think he's got the Casper Luga. Um, they all look quite similar. Uh, he's got a carbon Princeton rear disc. It actually looks like a fairing. I think it could be. Um, but anyway, apparently to test quick, or it must test quick if they're using it. And again, the Aero Coach front wheel. Um, got nice Castelli overshoes. I don't know if these are custom. I assume they probably are. They look like they're very, very tight fitting compared to some of the other people. Um, you know, you can get the Vortex special ones that Dows has written before, same with Dan Bigham, and they're like, you know, three, four hundred quid for some extensions. Remy Cavagna, really, really good position. He's got some custom speed bars here. Again, disc brakes with the shiv. This gap here must be a bit annoying because for triathlon, it's got a box that sits in there, which I think must be quicker. Uh, wax chains, obviously, everyone's on the wax chains these days. Um, it's just quicker. Uh, again, overshoes looking pretty, pretty tight which is always good to see. And his head position has got a lot better. He's got focused a lot more on aero, and his TTs are a lot, lot better this year. So I think, you know, it's, it goes to show, Dan Bigham was talking about it on Eurosport, that, you know, it's, it's all about the head position. You can get the head position just lo a little bit lower here. Like, okay, it's not unreal demonstration of how his head position should be, but I still think that, like, he, how much lower he's managed to get has helped his time trialing unbelievably well. Um, he won the Rom indeed, the one. He almost won the one in Paris. Oh, no, did he win? No, no, basically won the one in Paris. -Nice, but he's very, very close. Um, and you also see Bisco, he's not here, but his position is here. And then you just see like Chimalai, like this is like the old school, terrible time trial position. Like, and I think it's really important to show this, to show what time trials used to be like, where they just get really low hands. But the issue is if you have low hands like this, so you have really low hands, your head just sits up like that because you need to be able to see. So you can ride down, like completely head down. 
and then it's not too bad, but you need to be able to see. Even on closed roads, you need to be able to see. So you have positions like this. But I mean, Chima Lai doesn't care about time trialing. That's the thing. With time trials, there's like 30 riders out of 200 who actually care, which is the GC con contenders and the TT specialists. So this guy doesn't care. Just rides whatever he gets. Given soft tap round at like 400 watts for 10 minutes, just jobs good. Um, Formula is similar, not great position here. Um, and then this is Hugh Carthy. He's not on the POC tempo, which is a shame. These guys are lean, these AF boys. Uh, nice new bike, big fan of it, but not the new one. With This is the old Super super Slice um, chain ring. Sometimes they've been using 60s with the Vision, with the vision. Um, vision front and back. It's both tubeless. They've got a new Vision disc wheel, which apparently is super light and tubeless compatible with Vittoria Corsa speeds, fastest tires around. And he's got some Vision custom extensions here. They're not that custom, but you can... So they're not custom, but you can customize them to get a better position. So they go like flat and then have a little bit that goes up at the end. Uh, so pretty decent helmet. Um, it's, not, it's not a bad position. He's all right at time trialing Carthy. I think he could definitely get better. This is Gebra, Gebra Zeria. Um, again, uh, not bad position. Not not world class either. Or not, and then this is like a classic pro Conti lad who's just got whacked on a TT bike and said, get around, please. Um, and, you know, it is what it is. Uh, this is also David Chimala. I don't know why they don't seem to like him a lot. Fausto Maznada, he does, he's got better at TTs. No visor is always interesting. Edward Affini came second. Really good position. Just head down, arms there. I think, still think they could do something better. They all seem to have the same extensions that are just like a, a ski bend. With, well, not even a ski bend, more like a J bend where they go up and then straight up like that. I think it's decent, but I think if they had got some custom extensions, they could definitely improve their position a little bit and then definitely tidy up the front end. And when you're going like especially on these short ones, like 55, 60K an hour, like you can make real big savings um, on, on just getting some custom, custom stuff um, that goes around the arms instead of just being like a one bowl. Damiel Caruso, pretty good ride. Again, these Vision custom bars. So these aren't the same as the EF ones. They actually um, are custom all the way up um, and they're 3D printed. They look quite nice. Really project helmet. They changed from Nalini to Ale on the kit. I think Ale's skin suit seemed to be pretty decent. Uh, this is Dowser again, pretty solid position. I think, you know, it's always tough when they get a picture like this because I think his head position is normally a little bit lower. Uh, in terms of overshoes, these are the Vortec overshoes I was mentioning before and they are done just for him. This disc, I'm not sure if it's a head. It should be a head because they make quite a quick disc. But um, anyway, he's on his factor bike instead of his um, specialized shiv, which he uses when he rides for GB. He also uses a pop temper. Having said that, I think the HJC isn't that bad. I saw him doing wind tunnel testing in it uh, for the hour record, so maybe he must have known that he had he was getting it next year. But yeah, Dalsa I think will go well um, in just you know helping out teams, his TTing. It's still good, but he's definitely lost a little bit since 2019. Uh, here's Jos van Endem, again, same, same. All the Yumbo Visma guys have pretty similar positions. Do like the forks, which are white. Uh, we'll just, and then last picture, Giulio Ciccone, average position is what it is. Doesn't really care about TTs. He's not going for GC, I don't think. So doesn't really matter. Or maybe he is, but definitely couldn't improve that a little bit. Head's a bit too high, and the error head apparently is a lot quicker when you have a low head position. So needs to work on that a little bit, but is what it is. So hey, cheers watching. Hope you did enjoy this video. It's a very long one, but we're hoping to have, get a Jira video every day out. P pretty good to have that. Um, so anyway, cheers watching. Hope you did enjoy, and we'll see you in the next one.